All right, so uh, good evening, everyone. This open meeting of the Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. For this meeting, the redevelopment board is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, so we will first start off by confirming that all members of the redevelopment board are present, starting with Ken Lau. Ken, if you could just say here. Sorry, here, I, okay. I, I'm mute. No problem. Uh, Jean Benson. Present. Melissa Tintopoulos. Present. And Rachel Zemberry, I am here. I'd just like to apologize. Unfortunately, I am one of the members of the uh, residents of the Heights that still is having internet uh, difficulties due to the um, transformer issues. So um, I'm joining via phone, but I will do my best to uh, help us navigate through our agenda this evening. Um, I just ask that you bear with me. Um, Jenny has graciously offered to help to uh, monitor our um, public forum in terms of uh, the speaker list. So I thank you very much. Um, and I just wanted to recognize the members of the planning department who are with us this evening. Uh, we have Jennifer H. Present. It's just me this evening. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Not, yet. Thank you, Jenny. Okay, uh, and with that, we will um, move to the first item on our agenda this evening, which is uh, the continued public hearing for docket number 3650 for 190 and 192 to 200 Mass Ave. Um, and I believe we have uh, John Murphy here this evening uh, with the applicant, is that correct? That is correct, President and uh, Attorney uh, Bob Anessi. Great. Well, welcome. Uh, if you uh, would like to go ahead and kick us off with your uh, presentation this, this evening, that would be fantastic. Bob, would you like to start real quick or do you want me to? And I'm so sorry, if, if I interrupt for one second, Jenny, the other thing that's gonna be a bit of a challenge for me doing all of this on, oh, actually, never mind. I have a workaround, sorry, please go ahead. <laughs> Okay, let me know if you need help, Rachel. You can okay. inter interject when you need help. Okay, thanks. That's okay, I'll, I'll kick it off again. My name's, <clears throat> Bob can jump in if he needs to. My name is John Murphy with Summit Real Estate Strategies. Good evening, members of the board. Thank you for your time. Um, what I'm gonna do is briefly for about two minutes, just talk about the bigger picture items that changed with our resubmission here. We have all the consultants here on the line. I'm not gonna have them speak, but they will be available for any questions. We have the civil engineer, we have our architect as well as our traffic consultant. So if anyone needs them, they are here for you. So what we have done is I'll start with the most noticeable changes. We have taken one whole story off this building to start. That was nine units. From what we did there is we combined some other units to decrease our unit count even more. We, were, we are sitting at 24 units right now. And basically what we, we went back and all discussed together is, you know, we could probably go back and forth and, you know, a million different times with changing some things here or there and spend a lot of meetings going through this. But what we came back is with what we think is our, you know, final and best stab we obviously got a lot of feedback and we wanted to take all that into account. And we just felt like coming in with this version of the project is less impactful. It's still, you know, it works for us. It doesn't work as well as before, but it does work for us. We, we, we like it as is. Um, so that is where we sit. 
We are down one more parking space to 14 total. We have two electric charging stations. And the biggest shift that we made on the first floor is we rounded our commercial space down um, Lake Street a little bit more. We increased it from 2,084 square feet to 2,430, which is right around 17% plus or minus. And we think this, especially when you see the other side of the building, it squares it off a little bit more. It brings more attention down that side, down the side street. You know, our plan would, they have two entrances there, um, right next to the entrance emergency exit staircase, which is why we also lost that parking space because the parking lot shifted down, but no longer do we have those stairs dumping into um, the parking garage. And then our plan for the rest of this side of the building would be to add some either artwork murals or, or just work through that to bring, give it a little bit more, more life as well. And we moved the entrance for the residents to the old bank building uh, location, that door, which we felt like added a little bit more for the people living there where they have their mail room, a little seating area, direct access to the elevator and the stairs as well. Um, obviously you can see, which I think this rendering shows it pretty well. If you look at the building down Mass Ave, we do feel like this building fits in a lot better than it did previously. Um, we did, we took our best stab at it. You know, we're still welcome to hear more feedback on the look of the building, but we do feel like this is a great improvement. Um, I know there are many other questions, but I think I did address a lot of them in a, in a memo so that I submitted with this updated package. I'm not going to go through those all, but with that being said, those are the biggest items I think that everyone should know this and I'll turn it back over to the board. Great. Thank you so much uh, for taking us, us through the changes. Um, I think I'll just start off uh, tonight by saying um, that I, I do appreciate all of the efforts that were made to address the range of the, the board's comments. Um, that were that were provided at our at the last meeting. Um, I do have um, quite a few thoughts with regard to the design of the building and several other things. But um, I think the the biggest issue and um, something that we need to quite frankly address because we can't really move forward until this is addressed is the fact that the FAR is currently uh, double what is permitted in this in this B3 district. And that's that's just something that we we can't um, really move move forward with any of the other comments or um, any of the other elements until until that's addressed. So I think that there are a couple of different ways that um, that this can be addressed. And I'll just run through a couple that um, that I have on a, on a list here. And then I'll, I'll quickly turn it over to, to Jenny who can, um, who can expand on this a, a bit more before um, turning to the other board members. But rather than going through a lengthy debate of you know, the design and, and a lot of the other features, my recommendation is going to be that um, we ask you to address the FAR before um, commenting at length on any of the other items because it it would it will significantly impact anything else that we might comment on this evening. So in order to address the FAR, um, you're going to need to ensure that the residential is less than 50% of the building, which means you know potentially converting that second floor to office space, reducing the height of the building. Um, you know that's that's one path to um, to being able to look to a, a way that the board can um, provide some leeway on the FAR. Um, you could uh, move this to the, to the ZBA um, to, to, to go through the, the process there. Um, you could go to a 40B and, and bypass them, us, although I don't think that that is um, in the best interest of the, the town. Um, but there are Right now, until the FAR is, is addressed, um, you know, and I think my preference—I won't speak for the other board members—my pre preference would be that you look at a solution that is less than fifty percent residential. Um, there's very little we can do. Uh, Jenny, I'll just ask if there are any other. I know that this is something that you've addressed with the applicant as well. Is there anything else that I have not listed that you think is an option for them with regard to the FAR? 
No, I think, uh, Rachel, no, I think that, um, and for my fellow, uh, fellow board members, as well as the applicant and their representatives, um, I, I think that the, the primary issue really is the FAR. We've asked you to address that at the prior, the, the first hearing. Um, it's still, you know, while you did um, address it a little bit marginally, um, it's still significant, it's double what it should be. Um, and there's no way for this board to address that matter. Um, and that's really standing in the way of being able to get to all of the other design issues until you solve for that. Um, I do think that you addressed a number of the issues. I outlined them in the memo that I provided that's updated to the board. Um, but there were even, despite some of those other things that you were able to address, um, you know, there's still, a, I would say, a fairly significant concern about the level of uh, residential space that has, non-residential space that is now, um, you know, still lacking, um, I would say, on the ground floor. You know, the, there's clearly demand. This is in the, the middle of the business community, uh, this property. And the board expressed a pretty significant uh, concern about how how much space uh, was being lost to uh, other other uses on the ground floor, um, and so I still think that that's an issue. I, I think my staff also provided some comments about parking um, and circulation. We still have some questions about uh, some of those items, but I don't think it's necessary to get through them tonight because I think really the outstanding issue is how you're addressing or how you have not addressed the FAR. In this particular business district, there's no way um, to address that particular issue as we talked about previously. Um, and I, I feel that again, as I've ad I have advised you um, previously, there's not a way to really proceed neatly through this process without you addressing <laughs> that issue. So um, Rachel has outlined some of the options. I think we also talked about other possibilities that is up to uh, you know you as the applicant to figure out that course of action but I would say that I think you really need to listen to the people in East Arlington and what they've been communicating pretty um, you know heavily about the importance of the place where they live and the importance of the business community and the vitality of the community and how you can contribute a really interesting development to an already wonderful part of the community. So I, I hope that you will take these comments into consideration with whatever you do next. Um, but again, I think the, out, the most outstanding issue is the FAR. And I don't see any way forward for this board to address that issue until it's, it's off out of the way, then we can talk about all of the other things. But that, that is really the big, uh, the big issue at this time. Um, thank you, Rachel. And I'm glad to answer questions I, and speak um, about other other details from my memo or otherwise if needed. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jenny. Uh, so I'll run through just a roll call to see if there are any questions from the board for Jenny um, or for the applicant. And again, um, what, I, what I'd like to do is, is to keep this focused on tonight, um, the, the FAR, because until that's addressed, um, I think that the building will potentially change significantly and, um, it is the best use of the board's time to focus on that as opposed to some of the other items. Rachel, Rachel. Bob, and Essie, Rachel. Bob and Essie, can you hear me, Rachel? I, I can. Yeah, Bob. yeah, my internet is down, okay? So I'm on the phone, okay? Uh, I just would like to, and again, I Bob. recognize, Bob. I recognize, yes. Uh, we're, we're, we're running through the board now, and I saw that you were trying to unmute yourself. I, I see other people have themselves unmuted. Um, Rachel can't see what's going on because she's okay. on her phone as well. Okay. Um, so I I need for, if you're not speaking for you to mute yourself, please, so that we can all hear each other. Um, it just, it creates some interference. So if you're not speaking, please mute yourself. What we're doing right now is Rachel's running through the other board members. Okay. Um, all so right. we're gonna do that okay. first and then we'll come back to you, okay? That's fine, thank you. Okay, all right, Great. thank you. Thank you, Jenny, and thank you, Bob. Uh, we'll start with Ken. Um, well, actually, I'm very disappointed hearing this right now. I don't know why, how this got so far along the, along the line here, if there was an FAR issue. Do we, do we not have the authority to waive the FAR in a mixed use building, or we don't? We don't, and we also spoke with the applicant about this at the prior meeting. 
I mean, this is our third meeting. And, you know, we're, sorry, second This meeting. is our second meeting. The, the last and, meeting was a continuation of the hearing. Okay. But we're, we're going through, and, you know, we've already gone through, like, shifting shifting things, moving elevators, talking about parking lots and and uh, egress, all sorts of stuff there that, I'm, I'm a little, why do we even do that? If this doesn't even uh, meet the criteria of, of, a, of a project, uh, I mean, so, why was it brought up as this? I mean, it should have been out. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little frustrated on this, very much, very frustrated on this. And I don't, I don't know what to say. So, Ken, I'll, I'll just let Jenny respond, but I know that she's been providing this feedback to the applicant through through the process as well. Yes, I, I'm not, I think I've already understood. I'm not blaming people. I'm just expressing frustration about how can we get a project like this this far along and, and, and not meet the fundamentals. If we do not have the right, then that's fine. I, I, can, I will accept that. But I thought when we were talking about it, we had the rights to uh, um, approve a project like this because it was, it was within the district. And I thought it was in that um, the attorney made an argument that we could. And I'm a little confused as well at this point. So I don't know, Jenny, if we should hear from their attorney or how to best you, Jean, maybe uh, Rachel, Jean's raising his hand. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jenny, I have I to know. rely on you. No, Jen I know. And <laughs> Melissa um, spoke um, while Ken was speaking. So uh, let me, let me, before we, before we jump around here, cause that's hard to manage, let's, let's let Ken finish up and then we can figure out if there are other things to answer before we jump in. I'm pretty much finished Jenny for now. Okay. I mean... okay. Um, so Jenny, respond to that. Well, I can respond to that by saying we communicated this to the applicant in the beginning. We communicated it prior to them coming to the board. Um, there are, there is a possible pathway for them to go a different route. We also talked about that with this applicant. Um, and I think um, we've had other applicants come to us with issues. This one is a particularly significant issue for which the board cannot simply magically resolve. Um, and I, I think we, we talked about that actually at length at the prior, at the first and only hearing so far. This is the continued hearing. We did have that a while ago, but it is uh, part of that record of the meeting. Um, I, again, I don't have more to say about it. I'm not going to speak on behalf of town council about this particular matter um, and the memo that was provided to the board, but I, uh, um, you know, there are other things that can, that the board can do to address some of the other issues that have come up, um, including setbacks and uh, the step back um, the Perfect. corner lot issues and uh, other things that we that are also identified as some of the the, the problems with the plan. But this one stands out as, as something that we cannot address and that we have not addressed in the past uh, through this board. Um, so Rachel, what would you how would you like to proceed next? Melissa was talking. Uh, Gene has his hand up. Yep. So let's let's go to Gene next. But before we do, can I'll just also remind um, the board that this is one of the reasons why the board suggested that they that they look at, at the um, office space on the on the second floor to to bring this to um, fifty percent or greater um, commercial use at the last meeting. Uh, so we'll go to uh, Jean next. I don't know if Melissa wasn't finished with what she was going to say. I didn't want to cut her off if she had more. Um, thanks, Jean. I think just though the um, maybe what would be helpful for me as a new um, ARB member is just to be explicit on exactly, um, we keep talking about addressing the FAR, but be explicit about the bylaw and what we're trying to address or what we can address here so that it, that, that it's more um, evident for everyone instead of just addressing the FAR, addressing the FAR. So yeah, let me, let me um, say a few things because I agree with um, Rachel and Jenny about the commercial space issue and about the FAR issue. I will say for me personally, this is an example of a problem with the zoning bylaw. This corner should not have an FAR limited 
to 1.5, in my opinion. And that's a bigger issue. But I don't think that we, as a board, have the authority to deal with that. Now, I'm going to read a memo that town council sent to the ARB on March 13, 2020. So that was just about uh, a year and two months ago. It was about a different project, but it's about this issue. So um, he says, I, meaning town council, I confirm that while under no obligation to do so, the board possesses the discretion to afford both um, bonus FAR consideration under section 5.3.6 of the zoning bylaw and adjust required setbacks. However, within the limitations and requirements set forth, set for, forth in those sections respectively. And if you look at the limitations and requirements in 5.3.6, which is the section that allows for us to do bonus FAR considerations, this project as it's currently proposed to us does not meet the criteria for the bonus FAR considerations because of its size and because the principal use is residential. So while I, again, I think a FAR of 1.5 on this corner is an unfortunate part of the zoning bylaw, I'm following um, the, the zoning bylaw and the memo we got from town council 14 months ago. And therefore, I agree with um, Rachel and Jenny. Thank you, Jean. Um, Rachel, if it's okay, I just want to add one important omission um, in 5.3.6, which is the B3 zoning district is not an allowable district within 5.3.6. When you look at the table, it's not listed in that table. Um, I don't have an answer as to why. <laughs> I did try to figure that out a little bit today in case the question came up. Um, but I will just say that, um, you know, it, it's, not even, it's not even a consideration, a possibility. And as Jean noted by um, very helpfully reading that memo from last year, um, while we might have some discretion, we do not have the discretion within each section necessarily as it is written. Um, so Rachel, I'm gonna put it back to you. Great, thank you, Jenny. Um, I'll uh, see if any other board members have any further questions. Um, and again, Jenny, if you could just let me know if anyone raises their hand because yeah. I can't see before we turn it over to Bob and us. So Melissa, I don't know if you want to add. No, I was just gonna ask Jean, more. if you don't mind to send me that memo. I think that was from a year and a half ago. That'd be great. I, I can, prov I'll, I'll provide it again to the entire board. Okay. Um, I know that it's also posted, but I will, I will provide that as well. Um, Rachel Kin has his hand up now. Okay, please go ahead, Kin. I think we have to uh, do something amongst ourselves as far as um, some sort of a screening process saying that if we have no, if we don't have the jurisdiction to uh, approve a project, then the project shouldn't be brought up. Uh, it just, it, it just, be, it should be simply stated that this project does not meet the criteria; it cannot be approved, and it it stops there. It does not go all the way through to where we are right now. I think it sets out a bad. Uh, message to anybody who wants to develop in Arlington. Um, I, I don't know. I, I've, uh, we're trying to uh, encourage more commercial space. We're trying to encourage more mixed use. We're trying to do this. And to see a project like this get this far down and then say no. And we don't even get a vote at it. I don't know. It's, <laughs> Just give me a couple of days to calm down. I'll be fine. I'm just okay. kind of, uh, you know, miffed by it right now. Okay. Now remind me. Thank you, Ken. Uh, okay. I, I, Rachel, back to you. Yep. Okay. So um, I will now invite uh, Bob and Nessie 
Uh, okay. I know we're looking to um, make. I'm back up at this point. Great, uh, thank you. I, I agree, by the way, that uh, the FAR uh, issue uh, is a live issue. Uh, and like you, Jenny, I looked at section 5.3.6 to see in that uh, schedule or that maximum allowable that Doug Heim referred to in his memo, okay, to see whether B3 was even mentioned there, and it's not, okay. Uh, it, it is, however, mentioned for other uh, districts, of course, R7, B5, R6, B2A, and B4. Uh, my problem uh, is it has been, and uh, you, you will know from my argument on 82 Mass Ave, I think you folks have more power than you were exercising over the years. Uh, and I say that uh, in the context of why would the ARB have jurisdiction over important projects on Massachusetts Avenue if they don't have the ability to grant relief with respect to applicants coming before the ARB with respect to those projects? Why should the applicants have to go to the zoning board and have prolonged hearings before both the ARB and the zoning board? Now, again, uh, I, I'm recognizing that there's an issue uh, with the FAR. Uh, if you read uh, Doug's memo, okay, uh, Doug's memo doesn't necessarily answer that question, but he does refer to uh, the section I just referred to, 5.3.6. But again, if you look at that, B3 nowhere is found in that section. Uh, so I've got a problem, as Ken does, okay, uh, with respect to development in this town. This is a site that you will never have any open space on because quite frankly, if you're gonna develop the site, you're gonna have room, you will not have room to have open space. We can satisfy or get relief from the ARB with respect to everything, but I think FAR. And so the question comes down to what we do about that. Now, Jenny and I and John Murphy talked uh, extensively this afternoon, and uh, we talked about the matters you raised, Rachel, with respect to 40B, uh, going in a different direction and the like, okay? That's a total change from what we have been trying to achieve. And uh, quite frankly, uh, it doesn't make sense for me to see a 40B site in this particular area. It just doesn't fit in with the neighborhood. In terms of the kind of a building we were proposing, it does fit in with the building across the street on Lake Street, the Freeman building. It does fit in with the Summit House across Mass Ave on the other side. Uh, but again, we're faced with the FAR issue. And uh, like Ken, I am very frustrated about that in terms of how we can handle that. Uh, um, uh, John Murphy and I are gonna talk with the clients about that, I'm sure. I'm not gonna make the argument uh, under section 3.4 uh, that you have the authority. I'm, if I alluded to that previously, uh, uh, I'm not making that argument, okay? That under 3.4, you have the ability to grant relief for the FAR. I'm not making that argument, uh, but I think that uh, Mr. Murphy and the Pascudo family and myself have to talk about this more and try to come up with uh, a plan that works at this particular site. Uh, we uh, had 124 in invites to neighbors, okay, for a Zoom here, uh, meeting. Uh, the Zoom me meeting was held. There were 20 participants in the meeting, according to John Murphy, the meeting went just fine. We have certainly reached out to the neighborhood. There's no question about that. Uh, but again, uh, the FAR is an issue. I recognize that and that's all I'm gonna say on that issue. Great, thank you, Attorney Anessi. All right, uh, I will go once more through the board for any, any final thoughts before we open this up to public comment. Uh, and Jenny, I can't see anyone so you can again. Nobody has their hand up um, at this point in time. So I think that, you know, I can help you. We'll ask people to raise their hand if you're on the phone. I think there's just a couple people who have 
who are on a phone. So I'll wait until the end um, to, call, to call on people who, are, who wanna speak who are on the phone line. Um, does that sound Great. good to you, Rachel? That sounds good. So okay. if anyone to speak um, during the public comment period. And again, um, I would ask that, um, you know, we, we certainly wanna hear from, from members of the public, knowing that the FAR needs to be addressed before other items, I would ask um, that, you, um, that you keep that in mind with the particular comments that you are making this evening. Um, I will take the um, speakers in the order which hands are raised and then we'll follow by um, anyone who was on the phone following that. Uh, any member wishing to speak, you will have three minutes, up to three minutes to address the board. Please remember to start by address uh, by announcing your first, last name, and address. So Jenny, if you could um, let us know the first speaker this evening. The first speaker is Kelly Doherty. Hi. Um, I wanna thank you for letting me participate this evening. And Jenny, thank you for accepting all the letters that are coming your way. I think you may have missed a few, but they may have missed the deadline. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I think since you're gonna be revamping the entire design, the FAR issue is a big one. I just wanted to reiterate for this board and then ultimately if it's the ZBA or whomever, that this keeps getting discussed in the context of a project on Mass Ave. But this is a project on Chandler Street. The access for this project and the entrance to this proposed parking garage is on Chandler Street. All of the impacts in terms of traffic, visual, et cetera, they are all to Chandler Street. So I don't want that to get lost in this argument um, or this discussion because we, we would be happy to see something go in there. Uh, we hope that the owner is able to develop something to maximize his profit potential, but we are also residents who look at this building and we'll be looking at the new building and have had some issues in the past with it. So we just wanna make sure that what goes in there is done well and uh, keeps everyone happy. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. The next person is Catherine. <clears throat> Hello. Um, I am, um, <clears throat> I just- we need, your, your, we need your name and your address, please. Sorry. I'm That's sorry. okay. It's, um, Sorry to talk Kathy, loud. <laughs> and 31 Chandler Street. And um, I have a lot of concerns, um, but I just wanted to address the point that was made that we were adequate, adequately informed. Um, that's not true. I only heard about this from a neighbor last Wednesday, um, a couple hours before the developers meeting. And so I didn't even know that this was happening. And I've just been trying to play catch up in my understanding of um, just all the issues with regard to this. I've been going around and talking to a number of neighbors and um, a number of them also didn't really know much about us. Um, so I just wanted to address that point. I, I didn't, we didn't receive a postcard or anything in the mail. As far as we're concerned, we weren't really informed about this. Th thank you. Did you have any other comments that you'd like to share this evening? Um, the, that was the main one, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. The next person is Elaine. Hi there, uh, this is Elaine Maynard. Uh, I reside at 13 Chandler Street. Um, and what that tactically means is that my home is absolutely adjacent um, to this proposed structure. Um, I appreciate there are, you know, the number of issues with the FAR today. So um, I won't, um, I'll try and be brief here. Um, but a couple of comments. Um, I do take issue with the fact that um, last Wednesday's meeting sort of went fine. Um, I think Wednesday's meeting was productive. Um, however, there were numerous items um, that John did not address 
um, that had really been well documented um, from the previous two meetings. Um, and I just want to highlight those uh, quickly. Specifically was the rear of the building. Um, in the previous meeting, um, and I think in the comments prior to that, many comments were made to the quality of life and quality of experience that individuals living behind this structure um, would encounter. And changes were asked to be made to the uh, uh, back of the structure to appreciate the fact that there is a community, um, a vibrant community on Chandler Street. Um, when we got to that meeting, there that was apparently not available because it was so difficult to render. Um, John, I appreciate you following up and providing the back of the structure. However, I see the back to the back of the structure, there have been zero changes. So this is not in the spirit of addressing the needs of the Chandler Street community. Um, the second bit was we repeatedly talked about traffic impact. Um, again, I recognize we have a greater issue, but fundamentally, this is an issue about the quality of life, quality of experience of Chandler Street, Egerton, Herbert Road, Brooks, Hardy. Oh, Elena, sounds like you cut out. Oh, sorry. Um, so it's fundamentally an issue about these communities. Are you sorry, can you still so hear me? Actually, yeah. we can hear her, Rachel. Oh, it must be me. I. I really apologize. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. Okay. Yeah, so net net, it's, it's about these communities and it's about the impact to these communities. Selfishly, it's about what I, as the person who abuts this building has to look at day in and day out. And zero, zero um, work was done to address that issue. So um, yes, it was a productive meeting. Yes, it was appreciated. Um, yes, it's required, um, but it was appreciated in a good discussion, but it was not without its, its, its challenges. Um, so I just, I just want to note that I think it's very important um, that I continue to say this is about the impact of the community and there's been nothing really um, to address the community concerns of Chandler Street and other areas. So appreci appreciate the, um, the opportunity to just speak for a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine, and I apologize again for the interruption. Oh, it's okay. You're <laughs> talent. I I just want to um, make a make a comment for a minute about that. The there were two comments made about this meeting that took place. This was not a required meeting. It was a meeting that the developer chose to have with with a butters. I don't know um, a lot about that meeting. It had nothing to do with the town of Arlington. Was not part of the town's uh, public hearing process at all. We did not mail any postcards. We didn't have any information about the specifics of the meeting and when it took place. Um, so I just want to clarify that was not a formal town meeting. There were, no, there, as far as I know, there was nobody from the town in attendance. Um, and so I, I just want to make that cl clarify that to everybody listening, in case you were or were not at the meeting or don't know what the meeting was. <laughs> um, so just to clarify that point. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah, you're welcome. The next person is Jonathan. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm uh, Jonathan Josephs. I reside at 15 Chandler Street. I'm in the same multifamily home as Elaine, who just spoke. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of this meeting's talking about certain bylaws and subsections and whatever. I'm just going to limit what I sort of have to say to uh, section one, which is common sense. Um, so I kind of be a little plain talking, if you don't mind. Um, so a, a couple of things with respect to the discussions about, you know, whether the neighborhood was informed, I only heard through other concerned neighbors. I didn't hear anything directly from the developer that this development was proposed. And the conversation previously about, well, you know, we reached out to 300 people in the neighborhood and only 20 people showed up. I think maybe a better metric is how many of the neighborhood here are speaking favorably currently about the proposed development versus those that have concerns is probably the, the best metric for how this is being received in the, in the neighborhood. Um, with respect to zoning, presumably the town of Arlington has reasons for having zoning laws. So this idea of why can't they just 
be turned over? Why can't this FAR be pushed aside? Seems odd to me. Why doesn't the developer just develop a project that meets the zoning laws? And this seems to me to be a area of town that has commercial development and it also has people like myself who live there and we want to keep a nice ratio of um, commercial to residential. Um, I appreciate versus the five-story building that was previously proposed, we're now to a four-story building. I also appreciate the fact that you made the front on Mass Avenue look like three stories um, because every any reasonable person would understand anything taller than three stories doesn't fit with Mass Ave with that part of Mass Avenue. You look at the Capitol Theater, you look at the bank, it's all three stories, but it's kind of lipstick on a pig because you've made the thing four stories at the back, as Elaine says, everyone on Chandler Street has to look at. And the reason you're making it three on the front is it doesn't fit. So we really shouldn't be putting something that doesn't fit on the back either. Um, so with that, I will um, yield my time, but I would respect that if we don't like the zoning laws, we change the zoning laws as opposed to we just give variances to somebody who wants to build a very large building. Thank you. The next speaker is Rachel. Hi, thank you very much. Um, my name is Rachel Roth. I live at 16 Chandler and I agree with uh, everything everybody has said so far. Um, in terms of the FAR, I mean, it seems like what the developer really needs to do is build a three-story building. Um, that, that fits in with the area. Um, I do wanna flag a couple of concerns while we're here. Um, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt. Could you give your address, please? Yes, 1616 Chandler. Um, so one thing that hasn't been, unless it was in um, some new documents that were added um, very recently, um, one thing that came up at the meeting on Wednesday is the issue of lighting, both exterior lighting and any interior lighting that might shine through the windows um, on those of us who um, abut. And um, so I would just like, I think we would all like some information about what kind of lighting there will be, especially um, overnight and how that might affect us. Um, I also just wanted to flag that uh, a number of us are really concerned about the garage, especially those of us who live, live near it, having a garage where there's flashing lights or beeping sounds when cars go in and out. Um, that, you know, especially again at night when people are trying to sleep would be very disruptive. Um, so want to hear more about that and whether there's anything that can be done about that. Um, I'm not aware of any other garages like that in town, and I don't think it's appropriate for a residential street. Um, so those are the main things I can say now. I did submit um, written comments. Um, I know also one of our neighbors on the next street was concerned about the light because um, they get a lot of light pollution now from um, certain other buildings on Mass Ave. And, um, you know, so um, so those are those are the main things, and I guess I'd like a sense of um, of what happens next. And um, just the other thing I wanted to say is, it seems like there there is a legal definition of a butter, and maybe that's a three hundred foot radius. Maybe somebody can clarify. But um, we think when things like this happen, everybody on Chandler should get a notice um, because everybody in Chandler, you know, and Brooks and the other streets that were mentioned, Edgerton, or, or Egerton, sorry, that's always hard for me to say, we're all affected. And even if that's not the legal definition of a butter, if that's something the town of Arlington could change going forward, because people shouldn't have to hear about it. Um, I mean, it's good that neighbors are talking to neighbors, but we think the town should really notify everybody who's going to be impacted in a in a very dense community like this with one-way streets and one-way traffic. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I can quickly clarify. Legal notices if needed. Okay. Rachel. Please, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay. please please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Just that uh, we, we send the, the abutters notices to 300 feet from the property. 
and those are generated by our assessor's office. We mail them out uh, before the hearing. Um, there's a legal notice that's published. Uh, we follow what's under state law, which is Mass General Law Chapter 40A, uh, which governs uh, the role, the planning function of this board. Um, so I do understand what you're saying. However, I don't. I don't want. I'm not dismissing at all what you are saying about other people on Chandler Street or perhaps other in other directions as well. But just from a legal perspective, um, understand that when the town doesn't abut our notification, that is the that is the um, those are the parameters of it under our state law. Now, the other meeting that you've you've been referencing didn't have those same parameters um, because it was, uh, I, I don't know what parameters were chosen for it, but I'm just telling you what the town does when we mail out a butter notices. And they are usually in the form of that postcard. Um, right. Although um, in the past they've been a letter, but now they're postcard notices. Yeah, thank we you. We use the same a butter mm -hmm. list, Jenny, just so you know. Okay, um, so the uh, the applicant is stating, uh, John Murphy, the applicant is stating that the um, they used uh, the same abutter list to do their mailing. I'm sorry, I don't know the number of people who were on that list. Um, sometimes there's duplications as well, um, but I I just wanted to give you that legal definition. Thank so you. with that, I'm gonna say the next person is Stephanie. Hi, my name is Stephanie Hansel. I live at 23 Cleveland. Um, I just want to re-emphasize and reiterate um, what a lot of people on this call have already said, and I would like to thank the board for really taking into account this issue of the FAR. This issue of the FAR, I didn't even know what FAR was before this project, but this really kind of made me realize what is being proposed here is an extremely dense, large structure, and this lot is 11,000 square feet. So just keep that in mind. It is a small lot, but it is what it is. And we have zoning bylaws for a reason. You can't build seven or eight stories on that uh, lot. You can't even build five. If the lot was big enough, you could go up and still comply with the FAR, but that is not the case here. So despite what the developer with the attorney for the, the owners say, we have zoning bylaws that prevent overbuilding on small lots. This is a small lot. So I really appreciate that the board has taken this into consideration. The FAR is a very big issue. It is something that, you know, I tend to believe that, you know, even on busy Mass Ave, you know, as the re residents of Chandler Street have said, it's a residential neighborhood. I don't think we can exceed the FAR in the zoning bylaws, but anyhow, that's what we have in the zoning bylaws. So please listen to the community. This is what the community is telling you that we do not want an over dense, you know, double, more than double the far type of building. We want something that fits in with the community. We wanna be proud of the development. We wanna work with developers who wanna add something positive to our community. And so if the developer, you know, is serious about getting feedback and listening to our concerns, this is what we're telling you. We have safety concern issues. We have density concern issues. There's quality of life in the neighborhood. There's traffic. So please listen to us and thank you to the board for taking the time to listen to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. The next person is Don. Uh, thank you, Jenny. Um, I thought Steve Revelak was before me. I'm happy to it's wait not, for him. No, it's, uh, uh, he, he lowered his hand and then he raised it. So Don, you're next. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Um, what all this comes down to is that you simply cannot build a four or five story building on a footprint that is almost as big as the lot itself. Our bylaws provide for consideration of the rights of the neighbors by requiring certain setbacks and yard set setbacks. Something like this could be built on a properly sized lot and you need look no further than next door at 180 Mass Ave. This 23,000 square foot lot has a multi-story building on a 9,000 square foot footprint. It has sufficient lot area for parking and it could provide open space that would go with residential. And it could be built up to four stories on that footprint without exceeding the maximum floor area ratio. So the question is, what can the applicant do with his small lot? 
I suggest a three-story mixed-use building that is 60 feet deep and has a total footprint of about 6,000 square feet. Make the first floor entirely retail and restaurant. Make the second floor office condominiums. On the third floor, you could put in eight or nine apartments, and then you would still have a 30-foot setback of the rear yard, uh, which is sufficient room for parking and providing the required usable open space. And it would also give you a decent buffer um, to the residents living next door. Next thing is, is this financially feasible? This board is familiar with the recent RKG study of industrial zones and the pro forma analysis used to evaluate various options. I applied their model assumptions to this very scenario. For 190 Mass Ave, the three-story mixed-use building that I just suggested would cost about $3 million to build. Just the lower two commercial floors alone would be valued at $5.3 million. This is a feasible project and it would respect the rights of the neighbors and it would be in keeping with the stated goals of mixed use, which is to strengthen our business districts while expanding housing. Uh, before I conclude, I have one completely unrelated but in important question that would ask the board to relate to the applicant. How many group one apartments are included in these plans? Thank you. Rachel, I'm gonna move on to the next person. Rachel, can I call point of order for a minute? Um, we only have one more speaker, Ken. All right. Um, I, and I don't know where Rachel is. She, I see her, but I'm, I'm not sure what might be happening with her phone. So, um, Steve. Uh, thank you, Ms. Wright. Uh, Steve Revelac, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. I just wanted to uh, express a, a little bit of appreciation for the changes to the Mass Ave and Lake Street side of the building. Uh, I think they were a nice improvement over the prior iteration. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Thank you. Um, thank you. So, I, 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 Rachel, are, yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Can, can had something to 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 say. We do have two more people with their hands up. I just want to bring up the point that uh, that you know maybe you're not seeing it, Richard, but uh, as a as a decorum, we generally don't applaud or uh, put thumbs up or applaud when someone's speaking. That's just, we don't do that. We don't boo. We don't do any of that. So, can we remind the people that can we just listen? Thank you for that point of order, Ken, you're right. And, and again, I apologize that I'm not able to join due to the internet outage, so I can't see that. So I appreciate you bringing that to our attention and reminding everyone at the meeting um, what the rules of decorum are. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Ken. Okay, um, so there's a there are two speakers. I'm gonna go to the person who hasn't spoken yet and then we'll go back um, to another person waiting who has spoken previously. Uh, the next person is Chris. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Chris Loretti, 56 Adam Street. Uh, I'd like to make just a couple points and then pose a question. Um, as a former member of the Redevelopment Board, I'd like to address um, the attorney's question about just why large projects go before the ARB if they can't grant relief for things like FAR. And when I served on the board, we all understood it was to provide a higher level of review called environmental design review, but that was not to relax the dimensional standards in the bylaw. It was to provide you know, a higher level of the standards that are already there and be sure they really fit in with the uh, locales where these large developments were going. I'd also like to add, I, I do agree with Mr. Lau that this is a frustrating situation. And I would argue that if the board is not empowered to grant relief, as it is not in this case, the project should never come before the board and the options to the developer should be uh, explained, whether that's changing the zoning bylaw, doing a 40B or seeking a variance. Um, those are the only options that I see in this case. 
Um, finally, I'd just like to uh, end with a question. And there was some discussion at the beginning that I really didn't understand that seemed to imply that if the developer were to put in another story or greatly increase the amount of commercial space, um, somehow the FAR could be relaxed. And I was wondering if somebody could explain that or did I mishear? Thank you. Jenny, would you like to speak to the options that were provided um, by the planning department to the developer? Sure, um, but again, let me, let's just, we have two people who are back in the queue again with their hands raised. How would you like to proceed, Rachel? So I think we have um, run, run the course on, on this discussion. Um, I think that everybody has spoken for this evening. So um, I think we'll close, unless there are any new speakers, we're going to close public comment. We do need to, I think that there are a few people who were um, joining by phone. Um, I, are those I, people now? I don't see that person on the phone okay. any longer. Um, okay. So I, I don't see anybody else. There are, um, there's nobody else that's obviously looking to speak at this point in time. Okay, great. So at this point, I think oh, we'll close. Public. I take that back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just happened right at that moment, really. Um, we have one new. We have one new speaker. We do. We have one new speaker. Okay. And that you is wanted to go. Alam. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your name. No, the uh, Alham. Alham. Um, yeah, yes. Thank you. I'm 62 Magnolia Street, um, and I'm I'm joining the conversation. Um, and and I tried to learn as much as I could about the project earlier today. Uh, I appreciate everyone's comments around impacts to local neighborhoods and, and local streets. Um, but I also just wanted to voice that um, I really do hope that Arlington takes um, it, a commitment to increasing um, different types of housing, particularly smaller units um, and uh, making that corner more vibrant. There's currently two businesses that are completely empty um, and it's really depressing as a as a local resident to walk by that and see that continue so uh, I would really I, I appreciate all of the comments from the folks on Chandler Street but I really would also appreciate from a member of the kind of larger community to to think about what um, overall community vibrancy looks like and I think that means vibrant businesses not empty storefronts um, additional neighbor neighbors that don't look like, you know, my family, which is, you know, an N of five that maybe are single people that are maybe are um, older retired people. Um, so allowing access for for smaller units to be developed. Um, I I appreciate uh, uh, you know everyone's concerned for the local neighborhood, and I also very much like the newer design changes. Um, but I think. You know, I think it is important to think about something other than the direct impact to um, the 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 you know f small um, number of abutters that uh, about the units, and um, there is an, a larger impact that affects the community. And I think we should try to think about that in the context of also thinking about the the local abutters. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next person is Ryan. Good evening, uh, and thank you everybody for your contributions. My name is Ryan Jacobs. I live at 64 Chandler Street with my uh, spouse and young child. Uh, I actually want to echo a lot of what the previous speaker said. Um, I'm very much pro density, given that I live one block away from a major commercial corridor in a city region that is, is desperately lacking housing as an equity issue. Uh, and a diversity of housing to boot. So I guess my, my hope is that the developer um, can find a way to create the type of density that makes sense in one of Arlington's only three business commercial districts, while also, of course, maintaining uh, vibrancy and noting that having lived here for 10 years, um, the number of empty storefronts, even well before the worst of COVID hit, um, does again bring us back to the issue of without a critical mass of residents, you don't get the type of vibrancy in the stores that we wanna see. So as an alternative, half the stores have just been empty. 
And I don't see how that's going to change in a world of internet business that we can hope that Arlington's population base cannot grow and yet somehow East Arlington will remain a commercial um, mecca beyond the Capitol um, building. So I just wanna say, I certainly recognize the concerns that have been articulated. I, again, just wanna say um, very much in support of finding a compromise that allows for the type of density uh, that urban areas and town centers need, uh, both as an equity issue and to help maintain the commercial vibrancy that the previous speaker alluded to. Um, so that is that is all. Thank you. Those are the only two additional speakers. Uh, there are um, two people who had spoken before. Okay, so I think it, at this point, um, and given where we are on the agenda, we are going to close public comment um, and move to a recap of the um, options for next steps. You just muted yourself. I don't know if you meant to. I did not, I'm sorry. My evening is a challenge. <laughs> we understand. Okay. Um, I wanted to see if we could run through for the applicant um, once again, what the options are, which I know you and the department, Jenny, um, have provided to the applicant ahead of this meeting as well, in terms of what their options are to, um, to meet the FAR requirements or move forward in a, in a different direction that would um, allow them to pursue an option other than perhaps through this board. Sure. So uh, the FAR has been discussed with them as well as the other issues that need to be addressed um, and that are still, some of them are still outstanding. Um, they can choose to either address those issues and come back to the next hearing at a, whatever date we choose um, to provide us with a, a, an updated proposal that addresses those issues appropriately. I think that I'm not sure they would necessarily get the same height at that point. So some of these other issues with massing might become very different. So I don't feel that it is really a good thing to talk about all of the other issues until they genuinely address the FAR. Um, I don't want to prescribe a way for them to address the FAR. I think they have heard significant comments from the public, the board now two times about preferences. And I think they can uh, utilize that information and come back um, if they choose. The other options are if they believe that um, they would like to um, have more of a principal use related to residential and a significant amount of residential compared to the commercial use, they would need to go in a different direction. And one direction um, would be through chapter 40B, though not something that I would recommend in any way at all, but it is there's not a way to do a development here with the amount of residential that they've proposed, um, especially when it becomes the dominant use, um, principal use rather. Um, and uh, I think the, the, another scenario would be that they, um, they do some of these things, but not all of them and go to the ZBA for a special permit on some of them, not a variance, uh, but through a special permitting process potentially. Um, and I, again, I'm, I'm, we're speaking about this in a speculative way about what they may or may not do. So I'm, I'm, you know, Rachel, I'm a little hesitant to give them any more guidance than I already have at this time. I think it really depends upon what program they're trying to push and how responsive they are with the, uh, to the comments that they've received and also the, how well they understand the, um, the boundaries. I mean, they've essentially tapped at a boundary with the board and how far they, you know, they, they can't push it any further. And the FAR one is the last, is the last part, uh, part of that. So until that piece of the puzzle, which I think is a really significant and important one is resolved, it's really hard to touch upon all of the other matters um, that have been raised. So I, I think I, it's really back in the applicant's hands to figure out what they would like to do next. Uh, they were provided this feedback already by, um, by me earlier today. Um, would have provided it sooner if I could have, but I couldn't get to them sooner. So um, I'm sorry for 
you know, this being a little bit drawn out, I do think it was really important for us to go through the public, the public hearing process. Um, and to continue to listen to uh, abutters and others in the community about the project. Um, but I think it's back to the applicant to figure out what to do next. Um, Rachel, Melissa Great. has her hand up now. Great, thanks Jenny. Uh, yep, I was going to run through the board members um, before we uh, ask the applicant um, if they would like to continue the hearing and if so, to what date. So we'll start with Melissa. Um, I was just curious about what the applicant was thinking after this period of time, hearing everyone and understanding their options. Sure, that'll be the next, um, I, I agree, and that will be the next question that we'll get through, but um, I'll run through and just see if Keen or Kim have any um, final, final questions or thoughts before we turn it back over to the applicant for our next steps, and we'll start with uh, Jean. Yes. Thank you, Rachel. And thank you, everybody, for the comments. Excuse me. <clears throat> I had, I think, about nine different issues and concerns on the current proposal, one of them being the FAR. But because I believe the project's going to have to be reworked, um, I'll hold all of the other comments. They may not be necessary, depending what the project looks like. The one item that Jenny didn't mention that I think the applicant could consider is coming to a town meeting next year for a change in the zoning of the parcel. And if the applicant was at all interested in doing that, and I'm not suggesting yes or no, just if the applicant is interested in doing that, would probably want to come back to this board no later than the fall to start that discussion. And that's my only other suggestion. Thank you, Jean. I think that's a, a good point to make as well to the applicant as an option. Uh, Ken? No, I have no comment. Great, thank you. So I will turn this over. Let's see. <laughs> I'm not sure if um, John, you or uh, Bob will uh, be speaking on behalf of the applicant as to next steps. We can certainly continue the hearing to a future date um, uh, at this time, and we could select that. We would need to select that date this evening. This is John. I can go ahead and speak if you'd like. Um, Please. So it, I'll answer a couple of questions, but just to save everyone's time, I think at this point, it's most likely not the place for us. So I don't think we'd be looking to continue this hearing. Um, I hear everyone's concerns. There's a lot more that goes into these decisions than it sounds like. We've been working on this for almost, you know, close to 10 months. Everything that everyone brought up has been looked at. You know, I will just say you cannot build this building for $3 million. We've looked at all types of uses. We've looked at mixing things up. Steel's very expensive. We probably wouldn't even be able to build a two-story, two even three-story building as constructed this design with mixed that's mixed use. The cost per unit, the steel, it just doesn't make any economic sense. And honestly, you have to convince yourself and you also have to convince a bank that it's a good investment. And it's not as easy as it, it sounds as I'm, you know, it is a little bit frustrating to hear a lot of comments. And I do think it's, it is easier when it's not your neck on the line. We would love to make everyone happy, but there's a lot that goes into this. And I just think there's some better options for this very complicated site as the property line is the building. The FAR is very challenging here. I, it's my personal opinion that you most likely can't construct a building, convince a bank to give you a loan and have everything line up. It's very difficult. So I think whether that's 40B or other, so some, some other state uses and programs, all different types of housing we can do here that probably is a better you know, avenue and we don't wanna, certainly don't wanna waste the board's time either. So I think that is where we stand now. I don't think that this is the right place for it. Can I say something, John? Bob and Essie here? John, can you hear me? Absolutely, yes, yes. All right, the one thing I do not want is I do not want the vote, uh, the board to take a vote this evening and just vote it down. And the reason for that is that I would have a concern with respect to coming back before the board, okay? And I, I don't know what will come, 
we might come back uh, before the board with, but there is a provision in the law that basically states that uh, if you if the board votes it down and we come back, uh, and I'm not sure again what that comeback would take the form of, if we come back, we might be prevented from going before the board for two years. I'm not sure about that, but I have a concern about that. So my suggestion would be uh, that rather have the board, uh, I, I would prefer that the board not take the vote this evening and vote it down. I would prefer that at least we get another date so we have an opportunity uh, to decide what to do if we decide we don't want to come back at that point, we can withdraw, okay? But I don't think that we should let the board uh, take a vote because I don't want the board to vote it down. John, would you agree? Uh, that's what you think's best. Yep, no problem. Okay. Rachel, would that be something that the board would uh, be okay with? Hello? Rachel, you're muted. Jenny? Rachel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bob, sorry, I'm back. Um, yes, I think that, that um, we can certainly take a vote to continue the hearing. And um, I think what we would like to do is, is identify what date would give you enough time to um, regroup as a, as a team and be able to um, identify either your, your next steps forward or withdraw the application? John, I'm gonna to defer to you on that. Okay, so Jenny, if you could uh, give us some options. I know that we're gonna be speaking about meeting dates in the, um, in the next section here, but if we could um, perhaps find a, a date in, uh, in July. July. Um, we have July 12th or we have July 26th. Those Bob, are actually we, the, uh, the two dates in July. Bob, do you have John, a can, John, can you hear me? Yes, is there, is it possible you're the first one in August, Jenny, or is that too far? Um, I don't think there's any problem unless, you know, we haven't talked about our schedule. And so I, I, I think that we're probably going to have, it's possible we won't have any meetings in August right now. Um, because I think we have a bunch of vacations, vacationers. Um, Eugene, you're on mute if you're trying to talk. I'm not available on August 9. Okay, yeah. And I think Rachel's not free the other meeting in August. So I don't think we have any August meetings figured out yet. So right now, the last meeting would be July 26th. So if I could make Go a suggestion, if, if the 26th um, would work for you, I'd like to target July 26th. And then again, if we need to continue it to a future date, whether it's a date that we later determine we are able to hold a meeting in August or to September, if you do need more time, we can certainly do that at that time. Or if we decide to withdraw, we can withdraw before that Absolutely. date as well. Absolutely, that is also an option. John, is that okay? Um, that's fine. Great. So do I hear um, a motion from the board to continue this public hearing to July 26th? So moved. Second. It was moved by Jean and Ken seconded. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Thank you very much. And we will uh, see you on the 26th. Thank you. Okay. That closes uh, uh, our first uh, or continues our first agenda item. And we'll now move to agenda item number two, which is uh, the committee appointment to Envision Arlington Standing Committee. And Jenny, I will turn it over to you to uh, introduce the uh, appointee. Um, I am not sure that he's on, <laughs> um, actually. Let me see if Jagat is here. I, I don't see him. Um, okay. So, I mean, he, if, if you would be okay without him being here, um, you could proceed or you can uh, take the next agenda item. I'm not sure where he, you know, I don't know. Okay, um, what I'm sorry. the next agenda item? And um, if he 
arrives in the participant list, we can um, circle back. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll we'll have to defer that. I, I think we can still appoint him without him being here. Um, okay. It's also it's my recommendation to the board. It's for to approve my appointment to okay. Vision Arlington, just to clarify that one. Um, so I would, I would love for him to be able to serve. I hope he can get here. I still don't see him yet. So well, why, don't, um, why don't we give him another few minutes and we'll move to agenda item number three. Why don't we go to the next agenda item? So that is the town meeting recap. Great. Rachel. Thank you. So town meeting was epic and uh, <laughs> is now complete, which is why we're meeting this evening uh, past eight o'clock. So um, I wanna thank everyone on the board and everyone in the public who um, lent their voice to um, the uh, spirited debate around the zoning warrant articles. Um, the, the top line uh, is uh, that all of the recommendations of the uh, redevelopment board, whether they were favorable action or no action were, um, were um, supported by the by the um, by a town meeting, there was a um, substitute motion, or excuse me, an amendment which was passed to Article 38, um, which was the energy efficient homes on non-conforming lots. Um, but uh, and there was also actually, I believe that was sorry. I'm just going through my notes, Jenny. I think that that was the only amendment. Article 35. Um, the industrial yeah. uses. You're right. Article 35 also had um, an amendment which uh, increased the allowable height um, within the industrial district. Uh, so those were the two amendments um, that that um, that altered what otherwise the uh, board had had recommended. So uh, Jenny, I don't know if you have any other um, specifics that you wanted to to add to that. Um, otherwise, we could certainly take any questions that board members might have about um, the, um, the, the discussion and deliberation during town meeting. I would just add that, um, you know, it was an exceptionally, I think we talked about this quite a great deal, but it was a, there was a, there were many more zoning warrant articles this spring than there are typically. <laughs> so I, it's not the norm to have that many articles, but we were carrying forward a lot of articles from 2020. And we had to, of course, dispose of them. Uh, some of those were our articles and some of those were other articles filed by citizen uh, petitioners. Um, I, I guess I'm saying that because I, I don't necessarily envision that there will be as many warrant articles like that and of that nature, um, which was, you know, there were a lot of sort of small articles that ended up, you know, taking a lot of time to get through. Um, I don't necessarily see that uh, coming up, and I hope that we are able to make zoning amendments that I get that continue to implement some of the plans that we've been working on or that we will be working on throughout this year. Um, two of them are the housing production plan as well as the open space and recreation plan. Um, then, of course, we just adopted the net zero action plan as well as the transportation plan. So there's, there's a lot in all of these planning processes that will lead to um, not necessarily the open space plan, but uh, a, a number of things that I know will arise from um, all of these other plans related to zoning amendments. Some of them have some active, you know, people who are already very active and interested in, in pushing forward with amendments for a spring town meeting next year, um, even with town meeting just in the rear view mirror. It's already, mm -hmm. already talk about it. Um, and, uh, I think that um, you know it's really important for the board to stay engaged. We're gonna talk at our next meeting about committee appointments. And two of those committees, or three of those committees that are very important to zoning amendments are the Master Plan Implementation Committee, the Zoning Bylaw Working Group, and the Housing Plan Implementation Committee. Um, and currently we, we will need to switch up uh, the membership on these three committees. We actually don't have any board members serving on the master plan or the housing plan implementation committees right now. Um, and I think that that's, a, that's problematic. Um, we did have David Watson on the zoning bylaw working group, but we will need a replacement. 
Um, so I think these are these are some of the things to look forward to. But in terms of um, working with citizen petitioners, I just want to go back in time a bit and say that you know I think it's great that the board put together a really um, thorough sort of process and timeline, uh, which was brought forward by a petitioner, uh, Barbara Thornton. And I would like us to be able to follow, follow that moving forward. Um, if people are interested in working with the board, I think that that proved to be very effective, both in our um, efforts with the Clean Energy Future Committee, as well as um, on the accessory dwelling unit bylaw. Um, even with the parking minimums, in fact, you know, James Fleming attended our meetings uh, before anything was filed. So I do think if we can um, continue that with future petitions, I think that will be that will be very helpful for the board and the community. Um, but I, I can answer any questions about other things that passed or uh, questions that people have in general, if there are any. Jean has a hand up, Rachel. I have a couple of yeah. comments. First, I sat in on some of the town meeting when the zoning articles were up and Rachel and Jenny just both did marvelous jobs in representing the redevelopment board at those. And, and it was not always the easiest thing for them to do, considering the timing and the number of amendments and some of the things that were said. So I think, you know, they deserve a thanks from all the members of the board for that. So that's one thing. So thank you. Um, Second is, I think in addition to the height change made in the industrial zones, I think they also increased the FAR, if I remember correctly, in the industrial it was, zones. It was both, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. even though we didn't propose that as part of the industrial zones, I thought that was a wonderful <laughs> amendment that got passed by town meeting for the industrial zones on that and hopefully that combined with the other things will help in the redevelopment of the industrial zones. And <clears throat> I mean, I agree with Jenny. I think the process that we used that got the residents involved and working with us on their petitions was very successful. And I hope we can put out a schedule by early fall and encourage people to work with us within that schedule. Um, two other thoughts. One of the commitments that I believe that we made related to the zoning article, whose number I've forgotten already, wiped them all out of my mind, about not increasing the percentage of affordable housing um, in inclusionary zoning, was that would be taken up as part of or adjacent to the housing production plan, and we would come back with a report and a proposal for how we might implement an enhanced inclusionary zoning. So I don't want that to get dropped from our sort of radar screen of what we're gonna be working on in the next few months. So, and I have my own list of things I'd like us to consider, but I'll save those for another day. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jane. And I believe that was Article 45 that um, you were in reference to. Thank you, Rachel. Great, uh, Kim, any questions? I'd like to echo uh, Jean's uh, um, comment and thank you guys for uh, representing uh, the board in, the, in uh, getting these articles passed. Uh, good job. Um, I, I like to say, or can we, now that uh, we're sort of past this pandemic, uh, uh, we're, we're gonna start meeting again. I wouldn't mind having uh, uh, an organized retreat where we can talk about what some of what Jean's talked about, some of the, some, uh, some of the things we want to push forward and uh, as in a, you know, in, in a setting where we could talk about these things back and forth, as opposed to in, in, in this meeting where it doesn't seem as, uh, uh, is uh, easy to do, uh, I, I, you know. Uh, you know, I, I've never met Melissa, for for example. You know, uh, you know, me and Jean go back, but you know, and, and uh, so I would like to do that. Uh, maybe uh, set aside a day 
uh, sometime during the summer that we agree upon to have a, uh, you know, just a, a planning, board, planning board meeting, you know, Jenny and her staff too would be great. But we, we have like maybe a round circle and talk about things. And then uh, my other question is, I know it's off topic a little bit, but um, do we have an, another candidate coming in? I mean, one more voice is helpful. Um, do, do, is there a, a appointment from the governor yet or were we, where are we at with that? I'll ask Jenny to address the uh, gubernatorial appointee. Sure, um, well, just a couple of things. First of all, thank you both for the, those, um, those thanks. I appreciate that uh, very much, the recognition. You good job, Jenny. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I definitely appreciate that and my team as well. Um, I, uh, on the retreat idea, uh, Rachel and I did talk a little bit about that. We are gonna talk about the, the meetings going forward and we were thinking it would be more like a September timeline um, for something along those lines. Uh, it's usually in July, but it seems like we might not do it next month necessarily. Um, and it's seeming like August might be a break for the board. We'll see where we get to when we get there. Um, so we, let's come back to that when we talk about the schedule. Um, the gubernatorial designee has taken a lot of time, but I believe that we are now uh, there. We've got a candidate and there will be an appointment announcement very soon. Great. And I'm, I'm hoping that it's soon enough that that person will come to the meeting on the 21st. So we'll, we'll see how far we get. Great. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah, and you're I, welcome. And thank you, Ken and, and Jean, for the kind words as well. I really appreciate it. Uh, Melissa, any questions uh, regarding town meeting and the process? Uh, no questions, but I too want to thank both of you for being there representing the ARB and handling you know, all the questions, all the amendments, and um, with such grace. I really do appreciate that. I know I find that it's challenging at times. So, um, and I've heard from people in the community who've said the same thing. So you might not hear it, but I have heard it directly. So sharing, passing that on. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, Jenny, do we see if uh, our candidate has joined us? He hasn't um, joined. So okay. um, I guess I would ask if the board has questions for me about Jagged. Um, basically, this is an appointment. Uh, it's, a, it's to approve the appointment by me for his three-year term to the Envision Arlington Standing Committee. Um, and I was, uh, I'm really hoping that his term can start soon. The committee is actually down three members because we've had a couple of members cycle off um, the committee, uh, but those other two members are not uh, people that I can point. And I have had a, a great conversation with Jagat. Um, he also attended a master plan implementation committee meeting. Um, and I know that he's very enthusiastic about the opportunity. Um, he also really sees the connection between the master plan and the work of Envision Arlington, which I think is, um, is, is somewhat unique to some of the other folks who have served um, as my designee in the past. Great, thank you, Jenny. Um, I reviewed uh, the letter and, and the resume and I, I think um, Jagat's background is, is very interesting and would be a really welcome voice on the, on the committee. Um, I'll run through just a roll call of the um, board members for any questions for Jenny, uh, starting with Ken. No, I have no questions. I think you'd be fine. I mean, if, if that's what Jenny thinks is appropriate, I'm okay with that. Great. Uh, Gene, any questions or comments? Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed he's not here so we could see him, but those things happen. Um, yeah, I did read his resume and um, he has an interesting background not having anything to do with planning, but I hope that's sort of something that he wants to get into and do things with. And, you know, I'll defer also to Jenny's opinion that he'll be a good addition to the standing committee. Great, thank you, Jean. Um, and, I, and I'll just note that with the power and uh, internet outages, it's it's a challenging evening. So I, I too wish he was here, um, but I'm 
difficulties myself, I'm certainly <laughs> understanding. Um, and uh, Melissa, any questions or comments for Jenny? No, I, I think he had a different kind of background, but welcome his perspective. And so I think that's great. If he could come and we could meet his face, you know, see his face, that would be wonderful. That's a great idea. Jenny, perhaps if you could invite him to our next meeting. Yes, no, I'm, I'm gonna follow up with him. I really don't know if he had been here previously and then he dropped off potentially. Um, I didn't notice uh, in particular, but I will make sure to let him know to come to a future meeting and schedule that. Great. So I think we'll just need to take a, a vote to approve the appointment um, of, uh, and please correct me if I mispronounce uh, his name, Jenny Jagat Ad Ad uh, Adihya. Adihya? Yeah. Uh, thank you. To the Envision Arlington Standing Committee. Uh, do I hear a motion to, uh, to appoint this candidate? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a roll call vote. Ken? <coughs> yes. 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 Yeah. And I am a yes as well. All right. So that closes agenda item two. We previously finished agenda item three. So we will move to agenda item four, which is the meeting schedule uh, for the ARB from July through December. So um, Rachel, I'll, I'll start and just say that um, the state of emergency is ending on June 15th. So until further notice, uh, we will be meeting again in person for our next meeting um, and back in the same old place. Um, I recognize that we had 48 people at one point on this call and I have absolutely no idea how to accommodate 48 people in the conference room. It's clearly not possible um, we don't have a lot of alternative meeting spaces. Uh, we meet basically the same night as most of the select board meetings. If I can try to change our room and venue, I will try to do that. But um, for now, I think I just wanna to commit to the second floor conference room. Um, the other thing is that our next meeting is the last of our meetings that is starting at 7 p.m. Just simply because that's on our current schedule at 7 p.m. So we'll, we'll when we come back, together again on June 21st at Town Hall, it would be at seven, but then all these other meetings moving forward are back, reverting back to our 7.30 p.m. start time. Um, and I just simply, uh, you know, went through, uh, tried to stagger the dates, um, get away from Monday holidays. Um, and I figured that we would talk about it further here. So I uh, just wanted to give you that um, context. Great, thank you, Jenny. Um, so I let Jenny know earlier that I'm unavailable for the August 23rd date, and it sounds, Jean, like you're unavailable for the August 9th date. Um, so I think we should look at whether or not we um, find another Monday night, whether the 16th or the 30th would work. You know, Actually, I'm not the 16th. Look, you know, I had been planning for the first and third Wednesdays. And that's the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. I don't know if people would be available to do, you know, a week earlier in August. The second? Yeah, the second or the 16th or both. I, I tend to not try to do the double Monday meetings. Um, that's why I didn't put it on the second. Um, because it gives me a little space between meetings in case there's meeting materials that still need to be gathered. That's why it's not July 26th and then August 2nd. Um, Jenny, um, do we have it's, all, it's also up to you. Jenny, do we have a lot coming up this summer? No, I, I mean, you know, the, basically no. We don't have anything. I don't know when uh, 10 Sunnyside might come back and be filed, but um, given the date right now, I would say if they do come to us, they, it would have to be an August meeting. So we would need an August meeting. And I, obviously we already know what happened with the other project. I have no other active projects and I have nothing else in the pipeline right now, by the way. Um, so okay. I would Can suggest- Can we just cancel August for now? I was going to suggest August 16th 
since sort of in between. I, I just don't know, Rachel, I, I, I think you said the last two weeks. Right, I can't do that, unfortunately. I'm, I'm gonna be out of town the week of the 16th and the 23rd. Okay, so, I mean, if you wanna choose the second, we can, we can choose that. And then we'll, if it just, if it's too close to the prior meeting, then we'll, we'll cancel it, I guess. I think but that makes if, sense. Sorry, if, if 10 Sunnyside files anytime soon and the amount of time to review that proposal, um, it would mean we'd need an August meeting. There's also a possibility that they won't come back to the ARB and they're only gonna go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, by the way because they wouldn't be required to come to the ARB. Um, so I, there, there's a lot of scenarios there. So we may not need the August so meeting we, in the end. We do August 30 instead of August 2? I, I would, that would work for me. That would be better for me. Okay, works for Ken, what, does August what, what day is that again? Monday, August, August 30th. Say it again, both of you guys spoke. Monday, August 30th, instead of the two earlier August dates. Okay. I'm, um, I'm putting it on the screen and I'm gonna send around, once you vote on this, I'll send it around to everybody. It'll also be on the town calendar. Can I also make a suggestion that, uh, I, I would like to move the retreat not to September, but have it earlier in the summer because some of the stuff I wanna talk about is maybe some uh, zoning changes or zoning things that we could talk about. And I don't want to wait so long that uh, it'll take another year to, so I'd rather get it going and talking about it earlier. Um, so can we make it such that maybe part of this, uh, maybe the, the August meeting or the 26th meeting, we can uh, have that as a retreat if, if there's nothing really booked on that date, uh, nothing really going on, we just stay a little later and, and at the meeting and talk about these things. 26 is when you just con um, continued that hearing too, right? Right. Um, which is fine. I mean, you could have that if it continues indeed to that evening, um, then you could have the, the rest of the time on the agenda for sort of a retreat. Is that what you mean? I'm, a suggestion. I, I'm, I'm just, you know. Um. So if I if I could just give you my thoughts, I'm not. I'm certainly not opposed to that at all. My my initial thinking for um, September was to um, allow the two public processes for the um, the open space. Um, the open space public process and the housing production plan public process, it's hard to say, housing production plan public process, uh, to, to get a little bit further through so that perhaps we might have um, some information from that to be able to, to speak to as well. But I see your point as well, Ken, about um, some potential other topics in addition to that that we might want to speak to, so um, I'm, I'm open to that. I also found that when we um, met together on, um, I think we did a Saturday morning one time, it was, it was nice to, um, you know, kind of not be at the end of a, a long day and to kind of have a fresh, um, fresh perspective when, when we met. Um, and so my thinking too was to, to try and find um, a Saturday in, in, in September when we could do that. But again, I'm, if the other, board members um, feel like we wanna get started on working through some of our goals a little bit earlier by doing it in July. I'm certainly not opposed to that either. No, the, the only reason I, I say that, uh, Rachel, is I, I wanna make uh, you know thoughts about some of some zoning suggestions or changes, because right now what we ran in today was one of these issues. Yes. I, I, I think I think the, uh, the zoning along Mass Ave is so hodgepodge and it is, there's no real thought through the whole thing there. You know, how it developed was whatever was on Mass Ave was that's what it was zoned for. And there's no real thought. And I think we need to have enough time to talk about this and do a little, uh, do a little talking and reach out to the, uh, you know, to the community 
if we do it way too long, we're not going to be able to get it in. You know how it, when it gets into the fall, you, it gets really tough to get uh, get these um, things worked out. So I'd rather start a little earlier. That's all. That's what I'm pushing for, Rachel. I understand. Uh, I completely understand. And I think that's a valid concern. And I uh, don't disagree with you at all about the need to look at that quarter. Uh, Jean, uh, what are your thoughts with regard to timing for the retreat? Um, I like the idea of a Saturday. You know, I think that worked very well the last time we did it and because it was away from sort of whatever was on our agenda, we had sort of a little more time to discuss things and, and get to know each other a little better. And, you know, as with Ken, I've never met Melissa and we may not have met the person we don't know yet, who's gonna be the gubernatorial appointment. But maybe we can sort of, at one of the July meetings, at least sort of start the discussion and maybe put together the agenda and then carry it over and sort of do the rest of it, you know, on some weekend in early September. Thanks for the suggestion, Jean. Um, Melissa, what are your thoughts? Well, I think I'm, I lean to do something a little earlier, just having things fresh in our mind from town meeting and having having not had a chance to met, meet anyone in person yet, that's all. Great. So, I mean, we could look to um, one of the, the Saturdays in July um, to see whether or not we could block out a a morning um, for that. If not, I think we could look at, to Ken's earlier suggestion, um, the second half of the meeting on the 26th. Um, so I will throw out the 17th, the 24th and the 31st to see if any of those dates are, um, are uh, available for <clears throat> the board members or if there's a preference. All three dates are good for me. They're all fine for me too. Melissa? Um, sorry, they're not all fine for me. Um, did you say they're the mornings on Saturdays? Is that what you're? Yes, that's that's what we did previously. That's That's what the suggestion here was. Okay. Well, do you think we'll have our appointment guy um, person sorry, um, ready? Will they be, you think, on board by July? Do we know that, Jenny? Yeah, they will be. OK, great. So um, we could hold a tentative date, perhaps, and then firm that up once we know who the appointee is. So is it he, not a she? I don't know. I oh. just said the, no, the, was, the yeah, appointee. Okay. My person. I'm trying to get clues here, and Jenny's pretty. Uh... <laughs> um, uh, I, any of those dates works for me, by the way. So, I mean, Melissa, it sounded like one of those three didn't work for you. Yeah. So, did we be talking the 10th, 17th, and 24th? The 17th, think... 24th, or the 31st? Or the 31st. Okay. Right. The 31st does not work. The 17th, best, 24th. Fourth, okay, and then 31, I cannot do. So why don't we hold the 17th if that's acceptable to everyone for, for now? And once the appointee has been um, confirmed, we can um, we can firm up that date and we'll hold the 24th as a backup date, if that works. Yes. Okay. Jean, Ken, any concerns with that approach? Okay. Great. Rachel, um, aside from the retreat date, which I think we probably will have um, soon settled, um, are there other dates on this meeting schedule that don't do or don't work for people? Anybody object to any other dates, <laughs> but a differently, different way? Um, you know, I, I, I have to work around the Monday 
holidays in the fall again. So we've got, we do have one back-to-back -back meeting situation, but um, I think I skipped all the other holidays and everything else at this point. But let me know if there's any other issues. And then I don't know if there's teaching, if you have a teaching schedule issue with any of these or no. No, good. Okay. I, I have retired from my teaching job. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Melissa, do you? Penny, the only me? thing, I mean, I don't want to be a stinker, but the only thing I can see is the 18th on in October. Okay. Being a, a, a little bit of a challenge for me. And that's just one of those. Uh, one, is that a, uh, let's see. Oh, we only have. So we could do the 25th. It just means that I have another double, double Monday instead of the 18th. Would that work for other people? October 25th instead of 18th? I have no issue with that change. Um, Thank you. Good. Okay, great. All right. Um, I'll firm this all up. I'll um, send this around to the board, post it. And uh, I think we're good. Let me know if anybody has questions. Do we need to approve this, Jenny, or? Yeah, just to vote on the, um, the approved meeting schedule from July through December, please. Okay. So motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Great. Thank you, Jenny, and everyone for your flexibility. Uh, the next agenda item, uh, we have four sets of meeting minutes. So we will start with the meeting minutes for April 8th, 2021. Yep. And I will start with any corrections uh, with Jean. Uh, give me a second to call it up on my screen. Call in somebody okay. else first. We'll start with Ken. Nope. Uh, Melissa, any no questions? Melissa wasn't there that evening, actually. According to my okay. notes. According to my notes. Um, were you there? I, I looked at that, Jenny, and I think I, I don't know how I was remiss in me, missing a whole meeting. I, that was I actually, is this question. one where you came, where you came later? No, because I did come later to one meeting. I don't know if that was. It's not this one. Mm -hmm. It was. Um... Okay, I, I have I found my copy. I do have a couple changes. Okay, while well, we try to figure out if Melissa was or was not. Right. It was a Thursday meeting. It was an additional meeting. This was an added meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a Thursday. Right. It was a week time. Well, while Melissa's looking through her schedule, Jean, do you want to give us your uh, corrections? Sure. On, on the first page, uh, the paragraph that starts with, um, oh, now I have to make it bigger again. Wait a second. The paragraph that starts with Steve Moore, the second line should be planting rather than planning. Oh. And, yep. um, and then two lines down, after the phrase landscape plan, there should be a period before Randy Miron. And that's what I had on that. Got it. Great, thank you, Jean. And then Melissa, are we? Yep, no, we I'm confirmed good that or? I wasn't there at that meeting. Okay, great. Are there any other changes? All right, so we will, um, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from April, April 8th as amended? Um, second. All right, so there'll be just the three of us who can vote on this, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Melissa, uh, you'll need to abstain. Okay. So those are approved. Uh, we now have the April 26th 
meeting minutes. And I will start with Ken for any questions or corrections. Um, nope, I have, no, I have no, nothing here. Okay, I actually just found, I have one and Jenny, it's the last line of the whole document. Um, I think, or it's right before that. Um, we only had four of us at the meeting, so that oh, should be yeah. uh, four, four to zero. Uh, Jean, any corrections just have or a questions? Very minor correction. First page, third, third paragraph, second line it should say continuation for 190 and 192-200, 190 not 190 192-200, Mass Ave. That was it. Replace the Great. dash with an ampersand. I put in an okay. and. I spelled it out. Oh, you did. I think that's acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, did you have any uh, corrections? Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the April 26th meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Those are approved. Uh, the next meeting minutes are May 3rd, 2021. We'll start with Ken. Any question or any corrections? Nope, nothing I highlight. Nope. Ampersand. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jean? I just have two on the first page, about half way down where it says the chair introduced the second agenda item. The third line, I think it should say, when do you is the ARB's designee rather than designate? I think that would be the right word. And then um, the very last line of the minutes before meeting adjourned, I think it should be approved four to zero, not four to zero to zero. That's it. Okay. Great, thank you, Jane. Melissa, any corrections? No. All right, uh, is there a motion to approve as amended? I, I move that we uh, approve them as amended. Second. Thank you, is there a second? We'll take a roll call vote. Yes. Ken? Yes. Jean? Melissa? Yes. And I may yes as well. And the last set of meeting minutes are the May 17th minutes. Uh, we'll start with Ken, any corrections? No, nope, I don't have none. Uh, Melissa? No. Yes, Jean? I, I think in the, in the about halfway down the first page, where it says the chair introduced the third agenda item, the second line, I think, regarding Amendment 43 should be Article 43 instead of Amendment. Yeah. And the next line after that should be Article instead of Amendment. And the next line after that should be Article instead of Amendment. So I think those three places, the word Amendment should be replaced with the word Article. And then on the next page, um, we're about two thirds of the way down where it says Patrick Hanlon questioned if a two third vote for a change is necessary. And um, I think he said that the housing choice statute says that a simple majority is needed if, uh, if the town later wanted to tighten the ADU requirements. So it doesn't, keep. It just didn't say why he said a simple majority is needed. So I think I'd add the clause at the end, if the town later wanted to tighten the ADU requirements. Wanted to tighten? Is that what you're saying? Make more restrictive, whatever. Yes, those are the comments. Okay. Not, no edits to this final sentence though. No. Oh, right, I missed that one. <laughs> okay, because that's, that was the part that he was saying. That's it. 
Okay. I don't think David was at this meeting. <laughs> no, and at the end is a four zero zero, so it needs to remove yep. the last zero there too. Okay. And the one above it too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember if David was there, but I think you're right that he wasn't. So you have to remove him from the town. No, I he just, was not. I, I think it's just a carryover. Um, yep. Okay. Great. Any other uh, changes? All right. Is there a motion to approve the May 17th minutes as amended? So moved. I'll second Kim's motion. Okay, great. I uh, will take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So the minutes from May 17th uh, are approved as amended. All right, uh, so that takes us through agenda item number five. We will now move to agenda item number six, which is open forum. Um, and again, Jenny, I will ask for your assistance in um, uh, reviewing the participant list. So any member of the public wishing to speak this evening, please use the raise hand function and Jenny will call on you in the order that hands are raised. Um, please remember to identify yourself by your first, last name, and address, and you will have three minutes to speak um, once called upon. Okay, we just have Steve Revelak. Great. Please go ahead, Steve. Thank you, Madam Chair. Steve Revelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Um, I originally wanted to mention something, or mention this because I thought it was a something really cool that I had come across, but I think it actually ties into some of the, the discussions the board was having earlier. So in, I recently, due to a, you know, a ZBA case, um, came into the, came across a copy of a 1955 Arlington zoning bylaw, along with the map that was in effect at the time. Uh, the map is dated 1946. And the way we, had zoned commercial property back at that point in time was really, really different than what we have now. So our business zones in 1946, think Mass Ave, a thick band that runs, you know, one side of the street and the other side of the street for the entire length of the town. And by thick band, I mean like 150 to 200 feet deep on either side of the street. Much of Broadway was the same. And there are a couple of other little business pockets scattered here and there. The industrial district ran all the way from you know, basically west of Arlington Center to the Lexington line. And then you know, essentially from the Mass Avenue business district up north to what was then the Boston Main Railroad and what's now currently the Minuteman Bikeway which is to say that in the middle of the 20th century, we had a lot more land zone for commercial uses. And, you know, with respect to thinking it, well, this, I, I think seeing this helped make our own map, our current map a little clearer, because you could see where these, you know, what used to be business districts back in the seventies, if there was a residential use there, well, then it was no longer a business district. It became a residential district. Or if there was a business, it kind of got put into, you know, one of these finely compartmentalized business districts that we have. Um, but in terms of looking at ways to kind of open up the Mass Ave corridor, just I, I think it would not be a bad idea to go back and look at the 1946 map as just a frame of reference, um, but also maybe for some ideas. Uh, I presume town staff still has a copy of it handy. If not, I am happy to provide mine. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Steve. Uh, it's an interesting point of reference. I appreciate uh, Rachel, it. Rachel, can I ask them a question? Please, hey, go Steve? ahead. <clears throat> yes, you, have that, you have that in a PDF form? Yes. Would you mind sending it to me or to me through Jenny? I don't know how the right way to do it, but. Also, I have all the map scanned. So um, I'm happy to send it to the whole board um, for their reference. Thank you. 
Great. Also, Steve, if you want to reach out, you can, <laughs> you can do that anyway, regardless, but I'm happy to provide those that information to the entire board. It is an interesting map. There's a big chunk taken out of it, though. Do you have that chunk? <laughs> sure. Mine is not missing a chunk. Okay. Something must have happened to it. <laughs> well, um, I, I will I will I will offer to send my copies to the director and um, okay. okay, very good. Yeah, thank, thank you. you Steve. Thank you. Jenny, do we have anyone else in queue? I don't see any other hands raised at this time. All right. Uh, so seeing no other members of the public with their hands raised, we will close public comment for the evening. Um, and I'll see if the board members have any other um, final questions or comments before we uh, adjourn for the evening. Jean? Um, I'm ready to adjourn. Okay, Ken, anything final? I'm just looking forward to where we can all meet and uh, have a normal uh, uh, meeting, not through Zoom. I miss those days. Great, and Melissa, any? Questions or final final thoughts before we adjourn? No, thank you. Great. Well, I too, I'm first of all really looking forward to meeting Melissa in person, <laughs> and um, not having to read the uh, the script at the beginning for the remote <laughs> meeting anymore. Um, so thank you all so much, uh, and everybody uh, who's joined us from the from the public for um, all of these meetings. I appreciate it, and I will uh, see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motion. Our second. Second. Great. We'll take a roll call vote. Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Melissa. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Great. Thank you so much, and thank you for bearing with me with my internet problems today. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Thanks, Rachel. See you soon, Thanks, Jenny. Thanks. Good night. Good night.